Greetings and salutations, this is Domingo Martinez, and today I'm gonna to show you how to use a keypad. So for instance, if you wanna create some sort of front door that can open based on a password, or a garage door that can open based on a password, so you can have this keypad represent the keys that will be activating your password, and this servo motor right here can represent any kind of lock or hit uh, or latch that would open up based on the correct password. So for this keypad, um, you can find this code pretty much anywhere. All you gotta do is just Google it, uh, Google Arduino keypad, and you'll notice that you'll have the actual library. And in that library, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to identify how many rows you want, how many columns you want. So for instance, this keypad has four rows and four columns, but you don't necessarily have to use all four. So for instance, if I wanna just use three rows and three columns, I can do that. And um, then I gotta identify, okay, what are my hexadecimal values for those rows and those columns? So for each of these keys, you're gonna go ahead and put that here. Now, I created three rows and three columns, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of a column here. I'm gonna get rid of a row here. Sorry, another, let me just finish getting rid of this column. And now I can get rid of the, the entire row. Okay, so my password is going to be made up of simply uh, digits from one to nine. Okay, so let's go ahead and identify what pins correspond to my rows and what pins on the Arduino correspond to my columns. So if I look here, if I hover over each of this pin, you can actually tell where it's going to be connected to. So row one is connected to pin nine. So that tells me that keys one, two, and three are gonna be controlled by pin nine. Similarly, if you hover over column one here, column one is connected to pin five. So column one, which is key one, four, seven, and, and star, well in this case, it's just one, four, and seven, that's gonna be controlled by uh, Arduino pin five. So you go ahead and put your uh, Arduino pins here that represent the rows and columns. And then based on the library, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to create some keypad uh, map. And that's based on the hexadecimal values, the hexa keys, the number of rows, the number of pins in your column, and, or the number of columns, sorry, uh, the rows associated with those on the Arduino, the pins that represent the columns on your Arduino. And let's go ahead and activate our serial monitor by typing in serial.begin. And we're going to create a character, and this character we can call it custom key. And so we can generate a key value based on the, the key that we're pushing with this function here, get key. Okay, so let's go ahead and create an if statement and say, hey, if we have a custom key, if we press these, bu these buttons, what key is going to be printed out? So I'm going to go ahead and start my simulation. Oh, that's right. So let's stop this. Uh, we have three rows and three columns, so I'm just going to get rid of my additional Arduino pins that represent my rows and columns. So let's go ahead and stop this, and we'll start our simulation. Click one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I click this here, it does nothing because I only have three rows and three columns, not four rows and four columns. So now that we know how our keypad actually operates, what we can do is we can generate a password. And we could say, all right, if we're pushing the, the keys and it actually achieves the password that we want, then we can open the latch or unlock the door, which means just move your servo. So the first thing we're gonna do is just include the servo library. Since we're working with a servo actuator here, All right, so now what we want to do is we want to define the length of our password. So let's go ahead and type in define and the length, we'll say the length of our code here. And the length, we can make it four digits, five digits, whatever we want, we'll say four for this particular case. And then I'm going to create a variable that's going to represent my servo and uh, naturally I always go with, with my servo. So let's create a character array. And this character array, we'll call it code, and it's going to store 
a certain amount of values. It's going to store the three digits in it. So we'll call it code length. Code length. And so since we have four right here, um, if we're counting, we got to count zero, one, two, and three. So zero, one, two, three. So this is actually going to be uh, three values inside of it. So let's go ahead and create the actual password itself. So we're going to create another character array. We'll call it password or pass w. And it's going to have the same amount of digits in it. So it's an array with, uh, it's going to have three values. It's going to actually be a string variable. And we can make it whatever we want. We'll say one, two, three, just to be simple. OK, and let's create a byte that's going to keep track of all the keys that we're pressing. So as we press our keys, we're going to have to count it. So let's call it key count. And we'll initially set that equal to zero. But it's going to build um, as we press the keys. OK, so looks like we have everything um, set up for our keypad. Now what we want to do is we want to inside our inside our void ser, uh, void setup. Let's go ahead and activate our uh, both the serial monitor, which is already done, and the servo. So I'll do my servo dot attach, and it's connected to pin ten. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the actual array that's going to be our code. So as we press the keys, it's going to, uh, you know, create the code for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an if statement. Or actually, inside embedded in this if statement, we'll go ahead and say code, and we'll provide the key count here. So every time we press it, it's going to just add to the key count. So every time we press a key, it's going to add to the key count. And that key count is going to be stored inside this array. So it's going to tell us, hey, we got one digit, we got two values, we got three values. If we exceed three values, then, hey, we need to start over. You know, it might be the correct key or it might be the incorrect key. So let's go ahead and set that to custom key. So every time we press the, the custom key, the actual key, it's keeping track and it's storing that information inside this array called code. And so one thing we need to do is we need to make sure that um, we can actually see what's going on here. So let's do um, serial serial dot print code and the key count that's being stored inside that code array. Let's get rid of or comment out this serial dot print. And what we're going to do is we're going to just add um, our key values, so our key count. So we'll say key count and then add two plus signs to indicate that we're going to add one each time. So every time we press a key, it's going to count up for us. OK. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'm going to hit my start simulation. And hit clear. OK, so you can see that those values are being counted and being stored here. So if we run our simulation and we keep, we keep pressing values for our keys, right, that, that array is going to extend indefinitely. So it's going to keep on going until we tell it to stop. So what we need to do is we need to create some sort of function that uh, takes into account when to stop and how to delete the counts. OK, so first, let's go ahead and create an actual function that's going to delete the count. So let's to create a function, you type void and let's go ahead and type in deletes. We'll call it deletes count. And so it's not returning any information, but what it's going to do, it's going to return um, an empty array. So while our key count, while our key count does not equal zero, 
So while there's something inside the code array, we're going to hit, we're going to go ahead and delete everything and we're going to replace it with zero. So we're removing what we created and we're setting it to zero. And we're going to return that value. Okay. So while our key count does not equal zero, while we're pressing stuff, right, and, and it's increasing, what we're going to do is we're going to remove all the stuff that we accumulated, all the digits, all the integers we accumulated, and we're just going to set it equal to zero. We're going to return that value. So that's going to clear the count for us. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to be able to press one, two, three, and open up our servo so it's going to rotate our servo if we press any other combination of three digits our servo should do nothing okay so let's create an if statement okay and we'll say hey key counts if you're equal to the the actual code length minus one right because the code length is four and we have three digits one two three is our password so if our key counts here is equal to three, what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, start printing new keys on a different line. So we're going to create an empty space here and we're going to print it on a new line and then we're just going to delete the count. So we're going to include the actual function that we just created. So let me go ahead and clear that and let me start my simulation. And so if I hit one, four, five, that should be considered three digits. So if I click it again, it should give me three more digits on a new line. So that keeps track of all the times I'm inputting some sort of password. And hopefully I can get that password correct, right? If I get that password correct, then I'll actually open the, um, the the lock here. So if I look at my password here, it's one, two, three. So what I need is I need for this code array that's uh, made up this array of string string values or this array of a string here, I need it to equate to one, two, three. And if it does, then we can actually unlock it. So that means we can rotate our servo. So inside this if statement, right, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to compare to arrays and there's actually some sort of function that allows you to compare that those arrays so we're going to create an if statement and we're going to say uh, not str cmp so we're comparing these this code array and we're going to compare the actual password itself okay so if, if they're actually the same, then we can print that, hey, this is correct, right? And then if it's correct, then we can actually rotate our servo. So let's go ahead and say rotate 30 degrees. We'll say 80 degrees to unlock it, right? And let's put a delay of, of four seconds here. Otherwise, so else, let's go ahead and print that we're incorrect here. So zero.print ln, we'll say incorrect. We'll do a delay of one second. And we'll close our else statement, right? So if we compare the code array and the password array, and if they're the exact same, we're going to dish out a correct and we're going to rotate our servo 80 degrees. Otherwise, let's go ahead and uh, let's keep it locked. We'll say my servo dot right. We'll say 10 degrees represents lock. Right. So this is going to be lock. This will be unlock. All right, so let's go ahead and start the simulation. So I'm missing some sort of closed parentheses. 
there's an if statement. I need to close that if statement. Oh, I see. I'm missing a parenthesis here. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our serial monitor here. I'm going to clear this. Three, six, five, clearly incorrect. However, it, it rotates uh, 30 degrees to say locked, or 10 degrees, I'm sorry. One, two, three, correct, and you'll see that it rotates 80 degrees. So there you go. I just unlocked my garage door or I unlocked my front door based on the password that I set up. Okay, so I hope this video helps. If so, please subscribe. Thank you very much.